Hey, howdy, hey, everybody. Happy Saturday night. Aloha. 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 Hello. Cheers. Welcome to the show, Steve Tiki Man. So good to have you. Thank you. Yeah, good to be here. Yeah, thanks for joining us. We uh, we're excited about tonight's show, of course, because it's Saturday and Steve is here to hang out with us and talk about all uh, things Polynesian. And um, I'm going to pull up right from the start here. The Tiki Man's unofficial Polynesian resort pages on Facebook. Um, and you can find them over at www.facebook.com slash Tiki Man pages. Uh, great page. A lot of cool Polynesian uh, history and photos that um, not only from Steve, but other people submit, um, you know, and uh, he shares into the pages. So some some cool stuff there indeed. Um, it's a page I like to look at just because I'm, I'm a big fan of the poly. So yeah. I like to scroll through that a yeah. bunch and just look at nice. it. Get lost. Dream. Yeah. Reminisce about, you know, your past trips and next time you're going and you're going to be and my college. mental vision board, you know. Exactly. <laughs> Add things to do, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm always uh, slightly mentally, I guess, at the uh, at the Polynesian, you know, in the back of my head, I'm always kind of there. You, so. you know what? I, there's a part of us as, as true Poly fans. You never really leave. You're all there's a piece of you always there. Right. There. Really, yeah. I, for me all the time, no matter where I am. Um, I keep pressing the wrong things here. I want to let everybody know, of course, we are live. Uh, please share us out if you don't mind. We'd love that. Give them some some likes, some love, some thumbs up. Um, we're also on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Uh, we're also on Twitter, but I never really post there. But um, maybe in the future sure. we will. Twitter, Twitter's a good place to go, I think. I mean, there's a, a lot of people watch there. Yeah, we should. I should start really trying to build that up when I have some some time. Watch, that's the thing that's going to make us huge. That's the one thing. <laughs> yeah. That'll be the one. Why are we not doing that already? <laughs> we uh, we have some sponsor stuff to do tonight with DVCGasRental.com, our DVC sponsor, as well as the Magic World. Um, so we can get right into that because I want to spend as much time speaking with Steve about not just the tiki man page but you know again all things poly um well here it comes here it comes it's ready are you ready oh you're gonna float I'm floating all right float. all right we've got a good deal of the week for you guys here it is not it is not a Polynesian deal of the week, but it's the next best thing. It's Bay Lake Tower, Ooh. right? We have a check-in of August 30th and a check-out of September 1st. So two nights total. Bay Lake Tower's deluxe studio with a lake view. Unbelievable view. Yeah. This room's going to sleep with four people plus an infant. And for the two nights, it's only $672. So I know, Jay, every week, you know, you help with the math, but I think that comes out to like $5,000 a night. Oh, uh, yeah. Per um, person. Did you say 5,000? Well, yeah, you know, so using, my math is off, right? our, our special DVC code for 50, uh, it, oh, if the yeah. four of us went and took that deal right now, two nights, Bay Lake Tower, uh, Lakeview, $156 for each of us. And that's including, so remember, promo code NTV50, Lisa, save $50 right. off any reservation when you book at dvc-rental.com. You guys... What's the best way to get this deal? You want to reach out to Scott at dvc-rental.com. You want to tell him you want this deal. You want to tell him that us over at Disney Night Live, and now that's Disney, we sent you. Um, you also want to tell him how awesome we are and that Alan yeah. smells. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, what else? Uh, that's why I'll, you couldn't be on tonight because we yeah. don't smell him from the studio. He, he's actually showering right. right now. Yeah, he's all that Axe body spray I've warned him. He smells of cuteness is what he <laughs> smells. <laughs> um, please go book this deal. <laughs> promo code NTD50 to save $50 off. So it would actually only be $622 for the two nights. Again, Bay Lake Towers is, um, I think, my second favorite resort that I stayed at uh, on property. I really, really did enjoy that stay. Um, we also 
want to make sure that we tell our friends uh, about the other part of DVC dash rental uh, side of things, which is buy and sell DVC.com. If you're looking to buy a resale contract or you want to sell your contract, reach out to Scott and uh, Jason over there at buy and sell DVC.com and you can get that done. And let's not forget our other friends over at dmagicworld.com, 24 seven streaming Disney music magic. They have the parks music. They have the movie music. They have now that's Disney, Disney Night Live twice a week, right? So you could hear, you could, you could hear us twice a week. Here's my head. Um, if you tune in, that's also awesome. Yeah. Please check them out. You choose what they play. Let them know what you want to hear. Tell Jasper, station's awesome. D Magic World, home of the most attractive listeners on the internet. Best people, yes. best personalities, smart people. We love them. We do love them, and we, we get to pretend how good-looking we are because they really can't see us unless they're watching us live, which would be really cool. Um, so please make sure you check them out at themagicworld.com. Love it. Okay, it's, cool. It's really – it's a mood lifter. Like, ju you just completely yeah. Yeah. in your zone. So it's so good. We got it. It, it really is. I mean, what's better than, like, listening to Disney music and – I'm thinking I'm about gonna, being there. I'm not going to lie. I love it when we randomly pop up and you just hear a bit of us. It's so I know. Fun. I know. It's like my favorite. I love Yay. that part. It is awesome. I'm going to put back up here the Tiki Man pages, which is facebook.com slash Tiki Man pages. Um, and so let's dive into, I guess, all things poly, Steve. I mean, um, I, I – saw your page and and the site um i know that's a work in progress but the page several years ago and really just you know enjoyed all of what you have there to offer and the photos and stuff and being dvc owners at the poly and poly fans and so it's not the resort but also like the culture that comes with it and the drinks um, yeah. <laughs> the drinks. The drinks. The drinks. Definitely the, the drinks. drinks. The food, yes. Exactly. The atmosphere. <laughs> right. All, all of it. Yeah, it really is. Like, and the music. Like the first time I went there, I was an adult. My wife was there as a child, and I fell in love with Polly, and um, just everything about it is great. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about like the pages and like how did you uh, like get into the whole Polynesian, you know, vibe and everything that that you do. Yeah, well, um, I mean, I grew up in, still live in California. So um, in, you know, in the 80s, we, well, we'd always go to Disneyland. I've been going to Disneyland since I was, you know, little in the 70s. And then in the 80s, we, you know, started going to Hawaii, uh, Wahoo, Maui. And we'd spend multiple weeks there. I kind of didn't do the touristy stuff as a kid. So I'd kind of hang out with the local kids and kind of really started to learn. In fact, a lot of them thought I lived there. So I kind of learned it from not from a tourist perspective, but from a local perspective and appreciate the culture. Well, so I formed a, a love for Hawaii. Um, and then I had a love for Disney from being a kid going to Disneyland forever. And then, you know, 1982 rolls around and they have a special on TV about this Epcot center. And I'm like, what the heck is that? I got to go see that. So 1983, we go to Disney World for the first time because before that, it's like why fly across the country to go to another Disneyland? And now that they got Epcot Center, I got to see it. So that's where my love for Disney World, you know, came about. And um, and I saw the Polynesian, but we didn't stay there. And I'm like, what the heck is this? There's like a Hawaii in the middle of Florida. So for me, in the into the 90s, when I could start to, you know, as a 20-year-old, want to go on vacation. And I'd always say, do I want to go to Hawaii or do I want to go to Disney World? Going to Disney World and stay in the Polynesian, you're getting Disneyland, Disney stuff, and you're getting Hawaii in one. Because when you're at the resort, uh, you know, especially back then, you were immersed in that, that feeling. Now, I get the Polynesian really wasn't gearing towards being a Hawaiian resort. It was more of supposed to be a different islands and actually the imagineers their idea was like adventure land um but still it gives you as close as you can feel to that culture the music and the you know the entertainers and the, the smells and the tropical plants and everything you just don't feel like you're it's not like going to disneyland in, in downtown anaheim 
you know, you're somewhere else, you're on your own little island. And then you can go across the water or on the monorail and next thing you're in the park. So you get the best of both worlds. And that's where for me, it became such an important destination for vacation to get all those things that I enjoy all in one. Wow. Yeah. It, it's, it's a lot to offer. I mean, there's, there's so much going on and I, I, you know, I've never been to Hawaii. I definitely want to stay at Ohlone, but I definitely also want to go to Hawaii. I've never been to Disneyland. I think Lisa and Jay, you, oh, well, Jay, definitely. You should yes. work there. Yeah. Right? And Lisa. Yeah. Right. And I've been um, in Hawaii. There's this, there's just this quiet magic about Hawaii and it's a feeling and you get that same feeling at the poly. I mean, Dave, once right. you get to the island for the first time, you, you, you're going to see what it is. I mean, and and it's not something you can explain to people. They have to actually walk in the doors and get right. that feeling. It's a total experience. The minute you yeah, it's it, not the scent, the 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 sights, it's, everything. Yeah, I mean, we well, we've gotten so obsessed, and now do we have Polynesian stuff in our house? But we uh, uh, just recently bought the same scent air system that they use at the Polynesian uh, oh, along yeah. with the scents that they use there. So of course we walk out, you know, walk around our house and we just like, we're sniffing the smells of the lobby and the, and the uh, captain cooks and cause they use different scents in different areas. So it's, it's funny how those scents bring you back to a different place. You know, it gives you a calmness, gives you a different feel, relieves some of the stress. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's the, the Polynesian just, we've gotten to the point where now, We'll even go to the Polynesian. It's a it's a long trip for us. It's a California five hour flight. Uh, we'll go there and not even go into the parks. You know, the Polynesian is our destination. The Polynesian is where we're staying while we're we're out there and and just enjoying the the aspects of the resort. So, I mean, of course, for me too. Every time I'm at the resort, I'm usually going from end to end, looking at everything, seeing what's going on, what's new, what's uh, you know, in the back. And uh, in, in the past, I was updating all my. I have longhouse maps of all the rooms and, you know, so it's a, it's a lot of work when I go there too. I'll probably spend a day or two just kind of doing stuff uh, to update the web page or the site. And um, it's a lot of work, but it's worth it because it I'm able to help people understand. Did we lose everybody? There we go. Oh, no, we're here. We're yeah, here. We're, uh, understand the resort better. Um, so I can help them have a better experience when they go. Because so many people ask me, what's it like? Where do I get a room? What kind of view do I get? Uh, what do I have to expect? Because that's why my page originally started in the late 90s, was because when I wanted to go on my own without my parents, I go to you know, a travel agent and they, I say, well, what's the Polynesian like? What do I get if I get a Lagoon view? And they open up this brochure that has like one picture and the prices of all the rooms. No idea what I'm getting myself into or what I'm paying for. So being able to tell people what to expect so they know what they maybe want to pay for or not is is the biggest thing that I can offer people so they can go and either have a good experience and do it the way they want to do it. Or even in some cases, some people may say, yeah, that's not really the theming for me. I don't want to talk to somebody into going there. I want them to go because they want to go. I don't want to end up going and going, yeah, I'm not really into the tropical thing. I would have rather gone to the Grand Floridian or Contemporary. So, yeah. about your you know, site, having that information. That's what's great about your site, though. It's not it's not like going to the Disney web page where everything is super magical. It, it It's honest. And I, I appreciate that. Yeah, right. And it's not just from Steve. It's from, yeah, it's be from other people. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, and it's. Oh, I definitely know, rely. I rely on people all the time. I mean, right. being in California, you got to have people out there. I know you met Scott. Scott lives there, so he goes over there a lot of times and helps out. It's just it's seeing what's going on. I've gotten away from the like the daily news. I don't need to know. You know, I'll sometimes post what the new Dole Whip is, but there's so many bloggers out there right now that tell you the, the new food of the day or whatever. I've gotten kind of away from the what's happening day to day or week to week to more of a I'm trying to retain the history because I've met so many of the Imagineers that have worked there and cast members that have worked there, and nobody's holding on to the history of the photos, the information. So a lot of the cast members that have worked there for the last 20, 30 years have given me paperwork or copies of paperwork that they have in the back offices that just ends up disappearing or being thrown away. So yeah. I have like lists of what happens from like 
1971 till the mid 2000s on, you know, cast member uh, costumes changed on this date or the luau was built or the luau had the bathrooms installed or the the longhouses were built or, you know, everything. It was just like, and, and I try and keep track of that because people don't understand how much the resort has evolved since day one, you know, and in some good ways, in some ways people don't like, you know, like everyone's upset about the luau going, but, you know, right. keep your fingers crossed. Uh, years ago when I heard about it going away, um, they had mentioned it going to be an indoor uh, experience because there's so many issues with it being outside and shutting down because of the cold or weather or whatever that they they had talked about wanting to move it in indoors back in the days when they were building DVC. So maybe we're going to see that with the new DVC. You know, who knows? We'll, we'll know yeah. soon probably. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'm excited about that new uh, bill. I mean, I, I'm always excited to see something because you see, you know, the imagery of what they say it's going to look like, right? But mm -hmm. until it's really done, and then you can you can judge it, or when you're there with your feet on the ground. Um, so I'm excited to see that. I know a lot of people were really upset about it. Uh, hi, buddy. Um, sorry. Uh, so I'm excited to see that, and I also want to know, as a DVC owner at the Poly, how that's going to work. Um, you know, with yeah, my points. me so too. My points gonna apply, right? Like, yeah, can I use my points right. in this new building, or is this if the be rooftop separate? pool rumor is true? I'm buying all in, Scott, at DVC. Right no, now. no rooftop, no rooftop pool. <laughs> no, but, uh, but I think there's a grand villa, so maybe we can all rent out the grand villa and uh, there you go. and check it out from there. But right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of concepts. I mean, I I have um, I have pictures and uh, of a lot of concepts that came out for uh, the last DVC build that never happened. Um, I can't share. Uh, someday I'll be able to share them when all the people that work for Disney leave or die or whatever. Right. But is this, is this for now, uh, some people have seen it. And it, no, no, no. But okay. they have. They, they had a whole different idea for what they were going to do for the, the pool area outside the Great Ceremonial House back when they uh, built DVC. Well, first of all, there was going to be another pool that was going to be over between the DVC buildings that got scrapped. And the second thing was is that, that the, the volcano pool that became the lava pool was going to become a completely different area than it was. Um, and obviously, that must have been part of the cutbacks, too, because all they ended up doing was redoing, forming the volcano into the lava pool mm -hmm. and resurfacing the pool itself as is, um, and then adding the it was originally called the gathering place, the grass area that's there. Um, I guess there's really not a name for it now, but officially it was in the documents. It said the gathering place and that was where the entertainment was going to be. And, and they were even going to have a stage there that they had to have some of the dancers and stuff on, but oh, it became wow. the area for the movies as we know in the activities. And, right. you know, we, we all know the reason it's artificial grass is because when they first put in real grass, it was a muddy mess and they're like, you know, people, it rains here all the time. People can't go laying down on muddy lawn trying to watch movies. So it made sense to put in the fake grass as much as everyone makes fun of it and calls it the putting green, but, or the miniature golf, whatever. But, uh, yeah. you know, like plans it. change yeah. and, and it probably yeah. will with the new DVC. Right. We'll, yeah. we'll see how it turns out. I mean, I think there's going to be some, some surprises that people will like. I'm with you. I, I hope that my, um, that my uh, access for being a DVC owner there is going to allow me in there and it's not going to be like a separate contract. My, my DVC expert that I, I refer to uh, for my site seems to think it's going to be uh, that they'll just do a contract with however many years would be left from the original Polynesian contracts because it hasn't been that long. Right. And I'm hoping that's the case. Like it's just an add on to the same contracts. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how it goes. I, I'll stand with the crowd that says they're a little disappointed that it doesn't kind of match uh, the resort. And if you look at, I had posted some concept uh, pictures they had when they were going to do the five story buildings over where uh, Pago Pago is, because they were going to pull off those buildings and put in five story buildings there originally, including where the Luau was, because that was where the first uh, phase one was going to be originally. Oh, wow. Well, those five-story buildings look like five-story longhouses. The roofs look like a five-story longhouse. The top of it had the, you know, the kind of the beams like the Great Ceremony House had. It had the same colors. So it really fit well. Um, and I'm kind of surprised 
they then try and incorporate a little bit of that a little more into the concept for this new DVC. So, uh, you I know, say, we'll, we'll I'm, see. I was I'm hoping that Bayland Tower and Contemporary, they don't look the same, but they match very well. And right. I hope yeah. they do the same thing. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And, and, and I, I thought that too, because that was my first comment too. I'm like, well, you know, Bay Lake Towers doesn't really look like another, you know, piece of the a contemporary, but it, but it does go with the theme. Um, I think people are just saying this new one looks a little bit just too modern, um, and I kind of agree. But maybe that'll change, or maybe once it's really there, it'll look a little bit different, or maybe there'll be some accents that we don't see in these concept art that we'll see in person that'll be a little bit more like you're saying, fit the theme, but maybe not be a replica of the longhouses. The longhouses will be kind of like their own segment. And when I try and remind people that Walt con this isn't Walt's concept of the Polynesian. Walt's concept of the Polynesian was a huge pyramid looking, you know, structure in the middle with bungalows out around the edge, right. which we got their bungalows, right? But we didn't get this huge uh, building in the middle, which People nowadays, if they built that, they would hate it. But, you know, that was what Walt signed off on. When he was gone and they decided to go, go a whole other direction, you know, we got what we got, which is, uh, like I said, supposed to be an adventure land fitting theme. And um, so, you know, maybe uh, that would have been a mix of something a little more modern and something a little more tropical. So maybe that's going to be kind of the same idea. We'll, we'll see. That's a front picture of the. Uh, that's the new. Loving the update. Um, yeah, the the new uh, front of the Polynesian um, Great Ceremonial House. I saw. I grabbed that off of your uh, Tiki Man page. Yeah, that was my last visit. <laughs> yeah, see, they've got the colors there. Uh, they incorporate in the, the the oranges and the the peach and the uh, that they have like on the longhouses. Um, the funny thing for me is, is I can remember in the early '90s when it was all brown. And then it was uh, mid late nineties. They put the paint on the ends of the long houses and kind of did some of the decoration. And, right. and for me at the time, I actually didn't really like it. It's become iconic now for people that, you know, like the Polynesian, those colors represent it. Um, but for me, when I showed back up after they painted all that stuff, I was like, wow, it looks a little too cartoony for me, but it's definitely something that's grown on me. And it's definitely become something that people, you know, understand is the Polynesian colors. So having something like that incorporated into the DVC maybe would have been a smart idea to kind of blend it in a little bit more. And, and who knows, maybe that will happen. Yeah, the browns and the oranges, um, those blues. And I really like how the longhouses on the top, they have the, um, well, the birds, right, on the painted on the edges. Because when we, we first time we bought our son there, he was really into Angry Birds. So he was naming each long house after a different angry bird that it reminded him of and um but i really enjoy that i enjoy those colors at the no, poly yeah. yeah and the so i love that music that's just kicking there all day long how relaxing it is and um like you said the smells and just walking around that's my vibe because when i brought my lapu lapu onto the monorail i, I have no idea how i snuck it on there but got it on there and went over to the Grand Floridian and, <laughs> and it, like the people were staring at me like I was trying to steal something. And I'm like, you know, I, I want to go back. To Every college. now and then you have to treat it like Vegas. I did. I got onto the kids. Like, How do you get a lot, a lot of them? I'm walking around the Grand Floridian half in the bag. And it's just, you know, there's a different vibe there. It's like kind of, you know, uppity and yeah. And I'm like, I don't fit in here. I want to go back to the poly. I want to have my yeah. Hawaiian shirt on and I want to drink <laughs> my pineapple. So, yeah. Yeah, it's much more relaxed, you know, and, and like we we uh, we were talking about, you know, my site was kind of gearing people towards what to expect. Uh, I, something I get asked a lot about and I know we were going to talk about, it, especially since I literally just came back from Disneyland this last weekend and I went to their um, uh, club level at the Disneyland Hotel and saw the DVC being built. But one thing I get a lot of questions about because it's hard to find you know, in, uh, official information, you can't go to the Disney page and get really much is club level. And uh, of course yeah. the, the suites, which people are always asking, like, didn't even know they existed, yeah. let alone, you know, they have their own lounge and they're part of club level. And, and um, uh, it was a, it was a good, uh, I had been to the club level at the Disneyland hotel, I think two, in 2000. So it's been a long time and it's been redone. Um, I don't know that I was that impressed with it. Uh, back in 2000, 
but we had a really good experience. It, it's it's uh, it had great offerings. Uh, it was a great place to relax, to look out the window, look at the parks. And uh, the staff, I have to say, was amazing. And it reminded me of the days of the Polynesian club level where you kind of went to see the staff again. I mean, they were the people oh, that wow. worked there were amazing. Oh, God, and these um, you're making me feel so old. Sorry, <laughs> I, worked, I worked there at this exact time, so just flood me with memories. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Somebody had mentioned when I was up there is that actually an Imagineer. It's the one of them that worked on um, Trader Sam's uh, Guag Grotto and and the DVC stuff. I was there and I posted the pictures and he Facebooked me and he said. Uh, his only words were, I miss the elevator. And at first I was thinking about the elevator. I'm like, oh, the elevator that was on the outside of the building. And I had totally forgotten about that being there. But, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, everything kind of changes over time. And you, some stuff you start to forget about. And that's why I like to preserve it, especially with the Polynesian on my site. Because people just forget. And I do have to say that elevator was only cool for a few floors. And then it was <laughs> It was way <laughs> too much. <laughs> so J J yeah, and I tried to sneak the into the. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was gonna say we tried to sneak into the uh, Adventureland suite, and that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it; it's amazing. I've I've seen yeah. vlogs of it, but yeah, that's that's it. But I mean, did, Jay, you worked at a Grand Californian, right? So then I you, started. Well, I started at Disneyland Hotel. Disneyland Hotel, Hotel. Grand, yeah. Okay, so you worked at you worked You're at saying two thousand. We probably like walked right by each other and, and never knew it. <laughs> and so they're building. Oh yeah, DVC. I, I care. Well, when we were there, they were building. They were building the DVC when I was there in two thousand. Looking out the um, the uh, lounge window there. I mean, this is now the latest construction that they're doing. But the when we were there in two thousand. Oh, actually, all the um, even the um, uh, Cal California Adventure was being built. At the time, so we sat in the lounge and we watched all that, you know, under construction back then. Oh wow, nice. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead, Jay. And then, and then it opened, and we all went, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah." <laughs> little uh, little disappointment. So Disneyland Hotel has a Trader Sam's, right? That's the original Trader Sam's. The original. And yeah. then the one, the one at Disney World, and then there's also the a terrace outside, right, at Disneyland Hotel as well. Kind of the same. Is that how it, it yeah. goes? Right. Tiki Terrace is yeah the outside bar. Um, they they have a service bar actually outside too. They they do make drinks inside and bring them out that side door, but um, they'll make drinks out at the outside bar. Um, it's it's a nice experience because you can usually get in there a lot easier. Uh, oh. Then get in on the wait list to get inside. Um, it's you know it's a good last minute. You want to head over and get the same drinks, get the same appetizers. They have live entertainment out there sometimes. You can see the fireworks from there, so it's a nice spot to hang out. Uh, you know during the day, but especially in the evening. Um, the Disneyland Hotel, the uh, Trader Sam's and Chana Tiki Bar, uh, kind of has well they have something similar. They have the inside bar. They have outside seating that's part of the bar, uh, and they did build a service bar outside more recently. It, had, it wasn't there originally, and it's kind of attached to. Um, they have a Tangaroa Terrace, they call it, and it's funny because that's what the we had a Tangaroa Terrace at the Polynesian that used to be a restaurant. Right, and um, that's their that's their Captain Cooks. That's their quick service um, oh, okay. there. So, um, and it was funny because when they first opened up. It was around the time that Captain Cooks at the Polynesian had started introducing those. I don't know if you remember the touch screens they had for a while where you do your order off a touch screen. Um, both of, it was introduced at Captain Cooks as a trial, and then it, they moved it over to a couple other locations, I guess, but I know they had it in Tangaroa Terrace. I kind of liked it. You know, you could just go up and pick what you wanted and then bring your receipt up and pay for it, but I guess they had issues after a while and decided to take them out. But, uh, you know, they kind of – there's things about – the two coasts that they share similarities, uh, especially with the Tangaro Terrace and the and the um, Trader Sam's. So I feel at home a little bit when I'm there. Right. right. It's not the exact same. You definitely have like an East Coast, West Coast thing going on there. Oh, for sure. 
Yeah, the themes of the two are different. Uh, Enchanted Tiki Bar is more of a, uh, like you're, at, some people would say an adventurer's club. I don't know. It's eclectic inside. It's got a lot of hidden stuff. It's got stuff to represent rides. Like there's an Indiana Jones thing and there's mass from Oceanic Arts and Adventureland stuff and Jungle Crew stuff and Piece of the Tree for, from the uh, Swiss Family Robinson hanging out of the wall and uh, stuff like that. But um, they, the Imagineers went with a little more of a nautical, uh, you know, uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea kind of thing with uh, Grog Grotto. So you see the octopus and you, you got uh, Oa from the Tiki Room and and they just did a different, little bit different spin on that one, which is nice. You know, at least it's not a copy. You get different experience at the two. Um, they even have some drinks that are different. You know, they're not identical mm -hmm. at each coast. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, it makes it worth. In fact, we want to do a, a thing for we, we have another page. It's uh, Treasure Sam's Coast to Coast. And one thing we've talked about and we talked about doing it a while back and we still need to do the logistics is we want to get a group and we want to go to the Trader Sam's Grog Grotto and Trader Sam's and Chantiki Bar in the same day. <laughs> oh, I'm so in. we'll see. We'll I see if we can pull that one up. In. That would be very cool. <laughs> very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's gonna be. It's gonna be. You know, it's gonna be first drink the minute they open and last drink the minute they close. But mm -hmm. I think we can pull it off, and it'd, it'd right. be kind of a cool thing to do. I'm doing very the math nice. in my head right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. well plus our friends and air traffic controller so he's he's trying to figure out the logistics of the flights and all that so you know have your backpack ready because we're jumping on the flight as soon as that first drink's down <laughs> no no just carry on only right you know. exactly exactly can go. <laughs> yeah kim wants to go yeah definitely and i, I promise not to use to say yeah I'll let, I'll let you know when it's coming up <laughs> Dave, I think you and me need to be on that. Yeah, I would love to. But I'm also going to need, you know, drinks on the plane as well because that's a long time in between not to have something in my hand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll bring my mixer. I'll bring my shaker. Yeah. <laughs> we need to bring an, 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 our own plane mar our margarita maker. I'm going to pull up some of the um, – some of the other photos that Steve had sent along. So this is this is inside the uh, remodeled um, club lounge right over at the Polynesian in Disney World. Yeah, that's so that's uh, that opened up well. So we were there when were we were there. Um, we were there during COVID when they were uh, they had all this closed off. Um, we were there. This is when DVC was just open only, but they let uh, some people stay in the Hawaii building probably overflow or whatever. So we were oh, in the okay. Hawaii building and this was closed off, but we got a peek. Uh, it's out, it's open now, but, and then the funny thing was, was this, oh, this was for the, uh, the anniversary. So on the anniversary, they opened it up to a special event for club 33 members. Um, and that was kind of the first viewing of the new lounge. Um, they, they redid both lounges cause, oh, well, so some people don't know club level started in, uh, 85, um, and what it was is it was a room in the, um, would, would be a boutique now in the great ceremonial house. And what it was is any lagoon view room that you booked at that time, cause there was no club level longhouse. So any, uh, lagoon view room that you booked, which was any view facing the, the water, cause they didn't have theme park view. Um, you could add on club level. And so you had access to that lounge in the grill house for food and drinks and service things like that uh, eventually they added on to the end of the hawaii longhouse removed some uh kind of there was a, a, lo a lounge a lobby area of the longhouse and some rooms and they made the lounge which is all three floors you have the check-in kind of concierge at the bottom it used to be called concierge uh middle is where the food and drinks and seating areas and then there's an upper level that's kind of a now it's tv for kids car cartoons and books and games right. and um so uh and then there's also a club lounge in this the suite built so if you book a suite in tonga you have your own smaller lounge which i sent you pictures of that too that has some of the same offerings uh in a smaller area but you actually also have access to uh the lounge in Hawaii, there it is right there. So you have access to the lounge in Hawaii club level also if you're staying in a suite. 
Um, so it's nice. I mean, you can go right outside your room and get some things here um, and bring them back to your room. Or, or you can go all the way over to Hawaii and get a little bit larger variety of amenities. Uh, and for a while, I don't know if they're ever going to bring it back. I don't think they're going to. But for a while, when you stayed in a suite, you had a, a menu of items that you could order for room service like what do we had? We had pot stickers and the, and the wings from Ohana and we had salads and we had everything for breakfast, Tonga toast and fruit and Mickey waffles. And I mean, all this stuff for free order as wow. much as you want. And this is if you're staying in a suite. Um, but I, I have a feeling that's probably not coming back. Um, at least from what that's, I hear, which it was kind of a nice perk. I mean, you pay, you pay a yeah. lot for those suites. Right. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Here, all, all these pictures make me want to walk you know, away from, from everything and move in. <laughs> yeah, there's some, there's some of the daily offerings in the lounge. They So so uh, one thing I wanted to say is, so I, I want to say the Disneyland Hotel, the offerings, the offerings of the Polynesian are good. Uh, they went their cycle. Um, I think in the 90s and 2000s, the offerings were pretty spectacular um they, they had yeah chef dick chef dick was the the chef that was there for a long time he had some amazing stuff i have a lot of his recipes he gave me when he retired and, uh he was just very creative he had some great stuff and um and then you know he left and things changed and amenities started to kind of reduce and you know like the fruit went from being very tropical exotic to kind of your average you know bananas orange apples so you right. can kind of see the quality go down a little bit. And then more recently, I think they've been trying to step it back up, especially breakfast. I found now they have hot items for the breakfast, which is kind of nice at the, at the Polynesian. And some of the things they're trying to bring back or offer more. I still don't ever reached what it was at its peak and it may never, but, um, but at least I think they're trying to head in the right direction. Yeah. But I'll tell you the Disneyland hotel, their offerings were uh, as good as I've seen in, in a club level. And I've been to a few, I've been contemporary animal kingdom. I've seen the, the grand Floridians. And then obviously I've been going to the Polynesian club level for 20 some years. So, you know, you, you see the difference, but I, like I said before, the, the big difference was the people in the lounge at the Polynesian used to be just like family and they just were helpful, friendly, you know, everything you'd want in the experience. And um, it's been a little bit different, I think maybe turnover or whatever at the Polynesian uh, lately, but it may be training, I don't know. But they, they still, I mean, the, the people we experienced recently have been really you know, friendly and helpful at the Polynesian for sure. And the managers, I think have been much improved lately. But when we went to the, um, the Disneyland Hotel, it was kind of like, it reminded me of the Polynesian, there was people that had been there for forever and they know what they're doing and they know how to do it. And they just made you feel like you were the most special person on the planet with the minute you walked into the lounge. I almost felt it was almost embarrassing. I'm like, you don't have to, you know, be at my beck and call like this. I mean, seriously, I can even bring you my own dish. You don't have to clean up it. The minute I spill something, you don't have to come over and wipe it up. But the, yes, the, they yes, were helpful, they friendly. <laughs> they're, they're amazing. <laughs> but I mean, what I'm saying is it, it I just, you could feel it, it was just, and it was genuine. It wasn't like they felt like they were forced to serve you. They really were trying to connect with you. And uh, I think that made it a big part of our experience at that, uh, at the Disneyland uh, club level, for sure. Wow. Just want to take a, a quick second here to just say hello to everybody watching live. Um, thanks for spending some of your Saturday night with us here. Uh, we really appreciate you guys tuning in and being a part of, uh, of our conversation here with Steve and and um, and just kind of talking about all things Polly and Disneyland Hotel and um, I and uh, oh so we have somebody uh, the Universal Hector from Disneyland uh, Disneyland hey what's going on Hector and everybody uh, else watching um, I do a lot of watching the vlogs I'm a blog watcher and I really like watching the vlogs on the suites I've never stayed in a suite at the Polly. Um, it's a dream of mine. I would like to stay at a suite or in the bungalow, um, one of the bungalows. So I, I'll, I'll watch it from there. And uh, you've experienced that. And I think, you know, that's what's also cool about the page because you and other people that are in the page put the offerings there for people to see. Like you said, it's not like it's really available. If you stay concierge 
at, at a Disney resort, it's very hard to kind of find what they have, the offerings and photos of it. Mm -hmm. But these, you know, sure. the, these pages or groups like ours and yours, we have information like that available, which I just think is phenomenal because the first time I stayed with my family, we stayed at Wilderness Lodge and we stayed club level. And I couldn't really find like the menus and any information on it, it was so difficult. Um, and I'm like, I want to know what's in the club level. I want to know what it looks like. What, what, what are my offerings? What even what kind of beer is in the refrigerator? I heard there's beer there. What can I grab, you know, mm -hmm. from the fridge? So I think that's very cool that people share that information and you know what your offerings are if you're saying, you know, club level. Well, especially with something that costs so much, you know, I was doing breakdowns of the differences and, you know, we're talking, you know, anywhere it, there's a range of prices, obviously season and everything plays to it, but we're talking, you know, anywhere from 250 to $350 a night more at both. I looked at both Disneyland hotel outing club level. I'm not sure about grand California. I'm assuming it probably be similar. And then Polynesian, you know, I compared like theme park, standard theme park view to club level theme park view. And we're talking, you know, $315 difference a night, then add tax onto that. Right. So, but, and, and the question you always get, uh, I have for years and I see all over the place in forums is, is it worth the extra cost? Right. Well, I think if you got to start off with, if you're really asking and you're that worried about the money, don't do it. Right. Yeah. Um, and if it's an add on to the experience, it's not necessary. I mean, you can make, I, I don't ever think you're going to make a meal out of it. You can make a meal out of it, but don't count on it being your meals and you're going to save by going, not going to restaurants. That will happen, but I don't, I don't budget like that. I just don't assume it's going to be for that reasons. It's just a, a nice perk to add on to the experience. And if you're really struggling and, and the money is going to be a problem, then it's not worth the stress to add on a, a little a perk like that. Right. So, yeah. Because I, I know when I'm going there, I'm going to do something like that. I am going to spend money no matter what. This is going to cost me. So it's yeah, kind of a special thing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I did do I, I did a yeah, breakdown. You know, my old site, I'm, back, I'm looking at the page right now. I used to have a, a so I had a planning section and in my plan planning section, that was one of the first things I had, like, you know, club level or standard, the question, you know, I always get, what should I do? And I would go through kind of what you expect when you have the club level, you know, this, you have the private concierge desk to, to help you with your planning and things like that. You know, it's, it's hard to put a, a, an amount on what that value is. Um, so there's some perks, but you know, if you, you could, you do kind of save if you utilize the lounge, if you're going to be going into the, the parks from early morning to late night, then don't. Mm -hmm. But if you're kind of going to be in and out or spend a lot of time in the resorts, yeah, I mean, for us, we're saving on not having to go buy, how much is a bottle of water now anyway, $4 right. or whatever. Yeah, and, right. You know, we were getting uh, beer instead of going down to, well, right next to the pool. So we can get beer from the lounge instead of paying for it at the pool all day long. Uh, you know, snacks would tie, tie us over instead of having to go buy something from Captain cooks which i feel like i walk in there and i drop ten dollars just for a french fry and then um you know there's uh evening offerings you could easily make it your dinner i mean it's not a meal but it's it's nice offerings and maybe if you're not that hungry yeah. it's just the perfect amount and then you don't end up going to a restaurant and spending whatever you know amounts it's the, the amounts are just crazy now that you spend on food so it can help you know you'll get some value out of it but i just um some people just I, I maybe you need to experience it through others like i you know like you're saying we show you what the experience is like and then decide which hopefully is helpful enough to help people decide they don't go in going oh man i shouldn't have spent this money um i i personally think with the money you spend on the bungalows they should have club level access because I, yeah, that was the one knows. thing i felt like i felt a little ice i loved it i wanted to live there no and you can't even add it i mean you know what, but between you and me and no one else is listening, right? You could probably throw enough money at somebody that they'd give you access and it would never be an official thing. Um, but uh, it, you can't, uh, even if you said, hey, charge me 500 bucks a night more for the bungalow uh, to let me walk over and go into Hawaii's lounge. They just, it's not a thing. And, and I can't believe that because with the money you spend on those things, and, and you look at the suites, you spend that much money, and you get two lounges out of it, you know? <laughs> But we're yeah. talking about like two nights in a bungalow to do like renew our vows. I was just going to go raid the club level for alcohol. 
<laughs> well, make sure I'm there at the same time, and I'll just open the door for you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. I yeah. No. You know, my friends did that. They they did their they did their um, wedding uh, in a bungalow, and it was amazing. Amazing. I mean, it really, it, it really is an experience. And don't don't plan on going anywhere because you just want to stay in the bungalow all day yeah. long. Um, right. And seriously, uh, but I think for me, the, I would love to do a bungalow again. We've done them twice for short durations. Um, I've been in all the suites. We've stayed in a couple of them. More, most recently, we had the princess suite, the, the one bedroom. Uh, that's a great experience too. Um, it's not the view that the bungalows have for sure. But it, they're they're amazing rooms, and um, you know, with the price of what the club level rooms are becoming, it's really not that much of a stretch anymore to get a suite. You know, especially if you have enough people in it, or if it's right. like the multi bed. You know, like the ambassador has two bedrooms, or the king commander has two bedrooms. And you can even add on the honeymoon suite as a as another bedroom. But you you know, you may be able to make it kind of work, and it's it is a pretty cool experience being in the suite. So it's something I think. Um, if somebody can swing it even for like a, even like a night, just to check it out for yourself, uh, yeah. you know, add it onto your trip towards the end or something. How that be? You look forward to staying in the suite your last night because because then you get lounge access the whole day after checkout, so you can go to both lounges until you drive home, fly home, whatever you do. Um, you have lie. you can hang out in there. Not gonna lie, I plan on spending at least one night in that in that bungalow. Just in that private jacuzzi, looking at the castle all night. That, yeah, from, right. from dusk to dawn. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, no, that is pretty nice. And you know, they got the music piped in with a volume you can adjust out on the deck for the fireworks <clears> and <throat> little shower out there. And uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty amazing experience. Um, I, I'll I'll tell you, it's it's one of my favorite things. I think they did a great job with them. I know some people aren't huge fans of them and. They hate. I, I. We all hate that they blocked the view and took, you know, half the, the beach access away. But it is what it is now. Um, I, I think they're a little still overpriced, but they're. It's an amazing experience for sure. Yeah. I'm wondering. So I, I thought about this too, and I think a lot of people have, a lot of people have complained about the, um, the the amount of points it takes or the price it takes to stay in a bungalow. Do we think there is a chance they can lower those once they add this new building here on the poly, um, uh, the poly property? And because it's going to have one and two bedrooms, do we think that might like offset that those points? Well, so I'm not the DVC expert. My friend is, but we've had kind of discussions like this, and I'll probably butcher the explanation. But I know there's there's so many points per. DVC resort, right? And they have to right. like allocate them. They, they basically they, sh they should like if one goes down in price, the other one's got to go up or whatever. There, I, I think that actually did happen a little bit. I want to say re uh, in the last few years, I don't know, maybe it was during COVID or something. I thought he had told me they did adjust a little bit in that, not by any, probably enough for it to really make a huge difference. Um, but there's speculation that could happen with the new DVC, but I guess we really have to see how the new DVC contracts are even going to work right. on whether or not that could affect it or not. Um, I think it would make sense to them to do that because like you said, I can't imagine uh, the two or three bedroom uh, rooms they'll have in the new tower are going to be the, the cost. Well, the two bedrooms, I don't see them being a cost of the two bedroom because the bungalow definitely is a two bedroom basically, uh, right. you know, room. Mm -hmm. I can't see them being equal. In, in point cost no, in any way. No, yeah, no. So right. I, I don't know. Will the, will the grand villa they have there be the same as a, as a bungalow? Probably. Um, but you're getting an extra room and it'll probably be a lot bigger. Um, so to I don't know. I think we got to wait and see. Yeah. Oh, the view's going to be amazing for sure. Yeah. Oh, there's going to be yeah. nothing in front of you. Um, uh, you know, and I don't think they even have rooms that are on a ground, ground floor in the new mm -hmm. tower. So there won't even be like the chance of like Beachcomber Island blocking some of the castle or something like that. Uh, and that's It'll so be smart. A, just a straight shot. Yeah. yeah. You know, they actually, there was rumors they were going to build stuff out on Beachcomber Island as a DVC room, like on an island. And I, I, I 
was wow. trying to remember the explanation as how that was going to work. Like if you wanted to leave your room from an island, I don't think they're going to give you a boat to use, you know, <laughs> they're going to have right, somebody I, there I, all I the time the, to pick you up or what? I want my bungalow on the island and I want my little chauffeur to go <laughs> back and forth and I want massage at right. that price. Yeah. Well, yeah, place. he'll be in an outrigger and there'll be like hula dancers on the front. So yeah, it, it, they'll get you covered. <laughs> I, I ring the bell and he just comes across with a wave rider. <laughs> Somebody, they have to light um, the torch. Yes. <laughs> Somebody asked earlier if the story, the John, the uh, John, not John Legend. Oh my God. John Lennon. John Lennon. John Lennon. I was yes, John Lennon. If the story yeah. is true, because we were told that, so he signed the papers on poly property in a room that I guess still in some fashion exists. Uh, maybe it's been yeah, modern. yeah. So there's a lot of confusion about that. And um, so the confusion comes from the fact that the original person that brought him to the room, you know, talked about it and said that he took him to a room in Hawaii. So if you hadn't been to the Polynesian way back when, uh, you'd think Hawaii was the club level building. But Samoa used to be called Hawaii. So the Samoa building now was the Hawaii building then. So he was in Samoa, the Samoa long, longhouse. The other thing is, is I don't know where that all of a sudden started that he was in the corner room, which would have been uh, 1601. Um, Cause the, the guy that talked about bringing him to his room said he doesn't remember the room number, but he did say that definitely wasn't the last room. It was somewhere in the middle of the building facing the, the then Nanea pool. So, uh, we don't know exactly what room it was some somewhere along that middle span maybe 1605 1606 somewhere in in mid span but it definitely wasn't 1601 but i know a lot of people try to push that story as as fact and as far as the people i've talked to that were supposedly there at the time uh that's that's the that is the the what happened and I yes it was there at the time they were on a trip to florida and you see that I picture you ever see i actually have it on my site in my history where he has the Mickey Mouse uh, shirt on, and there's the interesting guy behind him in the gold speedo uh, that everyone loves to comment on. But uh, <laughs> so that's funny because that picture actually isn't at the Polynesian. It was actually at some other resort they went to while they're on their Florida trip that was in I think Fort Lauderdale. I I, I wrote it down in my history section, but I don't have it memorized. But uh, a lot of people think that he has the Mickey Mouse shirt on that that was the picture at the Polynesian. <laughs> You know, now I have I have a whole new idea for our, our Mickey's not so scary theme for our dress up. The gold, gold speedo. Speedos? John Lennon and someone in speedos. <laughs> I can't be John Lennon, and I'm definitely not we're pulling up a speedo. But um, I'll be John. I'll be John. Yeah, Lennon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you've seen the guy, I'm not I'm not hairy enough to be the guy in the speedo because that guy that guy had full coverage going on there. So. Let's put it in costume. We just the put the rug on. <laughs> yeah, this guy. Yeah, yeah. From somewhere else, where Chewbacca it. came from. <laughs> uh, yeah, he would make a good Chewbacca him. if you wanted to put him in Batu. Yeah. What does this guy want? He can't. He comes in late. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. What are you doing? What? It's it's the end of the show. We're coming on. Look at this guy. Hello. Look at look at the show again. He's, just to say he's ready for the subject. He's ready. I'm ready. Say hi I'm to ready. Steve, Alan. <laughs> Give me all the poly history. Well, <laughs> yeah, there's a drink for you. There it is. Um, so my wife, had, had, we heard that. So John Lennon was actually on a break from Yoko and was with a girlfriend. Mm-hmm. May Peng. Right? May Peng. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't Yoko it wasn't. with him. Yeah. Okay. Right. So that is Yoko. That is true. Yoko was actually he was he was Yoko's assistant. She was like, "Please get John out of my hair for a while." Yeah, right. <laughs> Take him away. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, there's so much I think that uh, not just like the the poly the poly history, but I, again, I mean like the culture, the music, and the and the drinks that I would I would love to dive into. And um, you know, we're at an hour already, so I think you know. Uh, we have to have you back on another night, Steve, to kind of, you know, maybe recapture some of that. And and, and so Steve has a, a Polynesian, like, theme, you know, bar, right? And and makes all these fantastic drinks and um, has all these great mixers that I... Uh, like my, like my, my, my Mai Tai and my, my wife here, she's got her... Well, we call her the... Pen. You come on over. You can get in camera. You can get in camera. 
She knows how to hula dance too. She trained when she was a kid. Come on over, you're the expert. She's been going since 70. She's gone every year since 1977. Wow. Elizabeth Marlon. Yeah, so she, we battle over who's more of the expert. But yeah, she, we enjoy the drinks very often. So we'd be happy to go down to the bar that has some things from the Polynesian, including I have a boat behind my bar that's a, it was mounted in the Luau that they removed it in uh, 2002 when they redid the Luau back then. It's only one of two that exists. The other one is actually in the behind the bar at the Tiki Terrace. And what it is, is it's a mold, the same mold they use for the Tiki room boats that hang from the ceiling but they made a half mold because they mounted against the wall. So it's half the boat with a wall mount. And we have that in our bar above it. And wow. so we'll have to show you. Nice. Show you that when we do the drinks. You don't want to see me out feeding me. Oh, you're feeding what? me all. She said well, I didn't need to see her. Yeah, She's I'm feeding, feeding me all the answers. All the answers so. <laughs> we have to have you both back on. Yes. So we, can, we can drink tiki yeah. drinks and talk about Disney 77 to now. Yeah. And Definitely. I want to know yeah. from Elizabeth, Perfect. did he keep all the facts straight? Oh, uh, yeah. So you're fact checking. You want to know if. Did if I keep all my facts straight? straight? You did okay. Yeah, she said I'm good. <laughs> okay. In Italian, we call that men's and men's, you know, kind of okay. Huh? We, we. <laughs> I do have to rely on her sometimes when I see. Um, I've seen a lot of the Polynesian throughout the history through photos goes through being there like that but she's seen a lot of stuff in person staying there she stayed there multiple weeks Two you know weeks every year, single year. Every year so like i'd see something and i'd go do you remember where this was we were just i just posted a picture today that was of a sign that was carved for the walkway to the polynesian and it took me a while to figure out where it was because the lady said it was in the 90s so it would have been after all the longhouses were built because the last few were built in 85 and it but it was looked really far away from that path that goes into the Polynesian that has the sign saying, you know, Polynesian Resort. And I guess what it was is there used to be a larger span between that little pathway that went in and the, and the tra uh, Transportation Ticket Center. They had more, less of the parking, whatever, you know, those buildings that are there. So there was a longer winding path to the Polynesian, even in the early 90s. And I, I honestly don't remember ever seeing that sign there because when I stayed there in the mid nineties, it just, it was gone. It was different. So sometimes, you know, she definitely will say, Oh yeah, I remember that was here or that was there. Or they used to do this or the food, you know, at the restaurants was this. And you know, when Ohana was Pepe Te Bay and things like that. So for sure, she definitely fills in a lot of the stuff that I just through all the research and all the being there just can't fill in the gaps of that experience of all the multiple days she spent there, you know, over, so many years. But you get us right. to the room with your eyes closed every time. Yeah, she does laugh at me though. She 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 says I can close my eyes and uh, I can walk down a hallway and stop in the hallway where our room will be every time. And <laughs> yeah, that, that is a I, skill. I've just I've done the longhouse. I I do the longhouse maps and draw out all the building you know and everything. I've just it's like burnt into my brain where every room is and that sort of stuff. <laughs> we um. My wife, yeah, you know what, Kim, Kim, send those pictures, or uh, if you could just put them in uh, up on the, the, the Tiki Man's page, but definitely send them to Steve because, um, or unless I don't know she, how quick she can put it up there, but she has a photo that I think she's been trying to figure out where that photo was taken when she was a little girl. Um, and then she has other sure. photos of when she was younger and stayed at um, at the Poly. Um so my first oh, that's awesome. Poly. I love to see him. Yeah, definitely. I did not go to the poly until I was an adult, but she was there as a child. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, she said she's going to – she'll post when she gets – We need to get oh, when we get home. On. Yeah, and I, I take all these – together. I, I take all these photographs and that I get sent. Um, you know, I asked for, for permission to use them, to post them. And then I put them into my album, uh, my Flickr album uh, in, you know, different years. If it's like, a you know, 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever. Or if it's, uh, you know, the restaurants or activities or whatever. I even have a whole section of all the construction pictures I, I gather over the years, either taken by myself or others that help me. You know, it shows people what it looked like when they built the different pools or when they built you know, DVC or when they built whatever. 
and it's nice to look back on that stuff because that stuff just gets so lost and nobody really stores it all to go through and right. look back at. De no, definitely. And so, you know, there's this, there's a lot of information that like for me is important to tell people, especially when you're going to stay somewhere like the poly, um, you know, cause Steve, you mentioned earlier, you know, if you're doing like club level or staying in a suite, you may also want to consider not even going to the parks, just enjoying the resort is an extension For sure. of the parks, right? And the theming is beautiful. I could spend a week literally staying at the poly and not have to go to the parks. There's that much, yeah. you know, for me to, to see there and take in because if you take your time and enjoy it, but if you're spending that money for club level um, or you're spending that money for a suite or, or a bungalow, enjoy your time there. Um, good night, Cornell. Thanks for tuning in, bud. Um, you know, and the other deluxe resorts. I mean, there's so much theme that goes into these resorts. It's incredible. Yeah, you know, I also have suggested to people, uh, I know we kind of joked about adding on a suite at the end of your stay for a night, but to be honest, um, I told people don't don't book a suite and don't book a bungalow for one night. Like if they're really pushing it, we're going we're gonna to use all of our points because we want to see a bungalow for one night because here's the problem with that. You get in if you're lucky at four o'clock and they're knocking on your door to get out of there at 11. Right. So uh, you just don't get to experience either of those. You, you got to do two nights. If you want to try and experience it, do it for two nights because otherwise you're just not really there to and, and definitely don't go into the parks don't pay for it and then go into the parks and you're in there yeah. for five minutes right exactly yeah i mean you know we always spend at least one full day at the resorts during our trip so we go every april because my wife's a teacher here in new jersey and we will schedule one day that we do not go to any of the parks and we just sit by the pool we spent the last the one of those days with jay actually he, yeah. he was out in florida and um you know make it a resort day and really take in you know the resort um, just don't for waste, sure. Yeah, you waste all your time in the park and you're spending money on a on a room. I mean the, the rack rate on these rooms is, is a lot of money, so you gotta enjoy it. Who said uh, oh my wife said, Oh, the original lobby. Yeah, that's another thing we can so I really think you know, if you'll come back and join us again, Steve, I think uh, you know, we can talk more about this because we can get into the original poly lobby and uh, yeah. just so much more about you know the the culture and things that go into it again the drinks and the food. as always as right. always i was just jumping in to mess with all of you all and throw you off your game and i need to jump <laughs> off because i was just gonna say <laughs> i would <laughs> promise to disinfect well, alan next time because we haven't talked to we haven't we barely acknowledge you alan and i'm sorry but you do look adorbs i do I, I have this smell. great outfit for tonight <laughs> yeah. um you know grad school is really throwing off my game but um, I, I miss you all, and uh, I'll see you all in in two weeks. Two that's weeks right. We'll yeah, and, and so uh, just hit my mic. Don't hit your mic. That's that's okay. Um, we <laughs> forgive you. I think you're and, gonna have uh, to make a decision though, Alan. Um, Disney Night Live over grad school because we need to spend more time with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doctor <It's>... Alan. <laughs> Disney Night Live, Dr. Disney Allen. Live. We Disney have Night Gideon's Live. cookies. Oh, yeah. yeah Brian, I think my university is closer to Gideon's than you guys are. All right. Yeah, I, I see where this is going. Don't make it work. Yeah. Don't make it Go work. back to your schoolwork. <laughs> and uh, one more thing, Jay Smell. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I knew oh he's going. gone. Damn, I almost, had, I almost had his mic off in time. I knew it was coming. Yeah. I almost had his <laughs> mic off. <laughs> We want to remind um, folks, you know, that are watching and, and you know, we um, see we put our episodes up now on a, as a podcast. So um, we'll have it up probably by next week. And we put it out there through Libsyn and it goes to all these different cool podcast places where people can listen. So um, I want to remind everybody to check out uh, www.facebook.com slash Tiki Man Pages. Uh, that is um, Steve's page, Tiki Man's unofficial Polynesian resort pages, which is on Facebook. And you can get a lot of cool information there and history and, um, you know, everything we were talking about tonight. And then I want to thank Steve definitely for joining and also Elizabeth in the background for fact checking you. Yes. And, uh, yeah, making sure all the information we were getting is on point. That's <laughs> that's very important indeed. Um 
we want to remind our uh, our folks out there too about all the cool stuff we talked about. Right, we had a great deal of the week at uh, Bay Lake Towers from DVC-Rental.com. Two nights stay. Um, please check that out. Don't forget our promo code, which is NTV50, to save fifty dollars off of the uh, re reservation, any reservation. So you get fifty bucks off the reservation at booking. And say hello to, once again to our friends over at D Magic World. Uh, people over at D Magic World, check out Tiki Man pages on Facebook. You guys will love it. <laughs> We're a bunch of wise guys over here, Steve. I really, I really enjoyed it, Dave. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, we had a we had a lot of fun. I mean, it went by like yeah. really quick. I'm, really I'm a little sad, but uh, yeah, I know that uh, you're on Cali time, so it's about what six six fifteen there, right? Six ten, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to talk about the Polynesian, so we could definitely do more shows because I don't think people that have been going for a long time understand how much there is to that resort, how much has changed that we could talk about forever. Yeah. And I think that's what happens. Every time I have a conversation, you think it's going to be a quick thing about, oh, the Polynesian, you know, like, how much can you talk about? But it can go on and on and on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I call it the happiest place on earth for a reason. I mean, I, it, it is my favorite place on Disney property. Yeah, it really is. Definitely. Yeah. Um, we're going to do our intro, or not our intro, our outro. Steve, don't go anywhere. Um, so you'll just be in the background while we're playing out, and then we'll just chat for another yeah. minute. Um, and Alan got me, so I guess Jay smells this week. Jay, thanks, Jay, thanks, you Alan. Smell wonderful. <laughs> you smell wonderful. I do actually. <laughs> thanks everybody for tuning in. We love you guys. Bye.